Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you as always for your tweets. Craig Burley with me here in the studio. Nadia Manua and <laughs> Nadia Manua is with us as is. What happened? Uh, Did you, something happen on a flight? What do you mean? It's affected your vocal cords. Well, not really. But well, how come? I've never been able to speak particularly you're, well. You're, you're not. You're un unable to get the. You can't speak. I don't know. I don't it's know what it is. It's a bit of a problem going forward. I'm um, talking of problems. Yeah. Has this been discussed yet? The picture that you posted on social media. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone back. So what is it, and what was it supposed it's, to achieve? It's, you know, I bought that thing from my lower spine. Yes. Where you you attach it to the door and you. Attach, it's a it's a, a portable uh, lower back traction. Okay. I've had a I've trapped a nerve in my neck and it's. <laughs> Two weeks now, it's still bothering me. Right. Uh, I've been to the Cairo today, so I bought this a week or so ago, maybe less. Uh, it's supposed to, you're supposed to, <laughs> you pump, I should have known it was nonsense. You put it on, you pump it up. <laughs> <laughs> With your hand, you pump it up and it goes up. And it's supposed oh, to track. You should have taken a video of that. That's a picture. That would be brilliant. To tra you traction your neck to, to traction your spine. However, I found it doesn't work, so I sent it back. In right. the picture, in the picture, it looks like you have a teeth problem, you know, but not a neck problem. Yeah, it was pushing my chins up. <laughs> what, I what, I found, what I found was, what I found, it laid my chins again and went up. And it wasn't, it wasn't traction on my neck, so I sent it back. They sent me a replacement. I said, oh. I don't want a replacement. <laughs> So I'm back, at, I'm back to searching for... Uh, right, OK. I, well, I need something at home to traction my neck as well as my lower spine. If I encounter a problem, say, over the weekend when I can't just fall right. up the chiropractor and go. I thought this was it, but it's not. Oh. And also, it's a very endearing picture, I think. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture of you, dear, in the state of that. And also, I found it quite difficult to get my uh, glass of wine <laughs> okay, for all, were you really happy Dan was away? Frank, obviously our paths didn't cross. You were here in the studio as I went to England. Yes, I know. You tried to escape from me. You left just before I arrived and you just yeah. came back uh, yesterday when I left, the day before. So I know it tells a lot about our friendship, but whatever, you know. I, I put that in my list, you know, and I know and I will remember forever. I was bored without you over there because I love you, but you don't, you hate me. That's it, you know. <laughs> oh, that's he it. He, that's didn't, it. he didn't seem bored. I'll tell no. you. What was he so I didn't, I didn't know he was in. I right. didn't know he was I remember him saying something about him coming here, but yeah. I didn't know. And I was walking along the corridor it was Saturday I believe it was yeah it was Saturday and I was walking <laughs> along from our office to this part of the uh, building and I heard them of course you did oh sorry of I'm course you did and I, and I heard them and he was telling Christina who was filling in yes. for you yep he was telling Christina I heard them say to Christina about I won the about, World Cup. Yeah, World Cup, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I heard them saying, 1998, World Cup, and I, was, I, I said, I heard them say in France, when I go down the coffee shop, uh, I said, I'll, I'll put it on top of my head. <laughs> and I walk about France. And she was loving it. And she course. thought it was just great. I mean, of course. Come back, Frankie, she was saying. She's like, what a story that is. That's got uh, people lying. lying. It's I a lie. The experience in England of something that you must obviously have to deal with a lot is average speed cameras, which are, <laughs> which are, which are a new, well, I haven't experienced that much of them. How, so basically, they take a picture at the start of your journey on the motorway, and at the end, work out your average speed during that time, and if you go over it, you get a ticket. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah it is, it is. Like normally, you know, we've, not to like, reveal ourselves too much here, but you know, when it's a normal speed camera, you know, you just surf it, you go through just yes. nice, the right speed, then off you pop. But then when you've got like five, 10 miles of average speed checks, you think to myself, oh my God, they've literally got me here. But to go back to the uh, the question before that, I've got to say, so I realized my place in the ESPN hierarchy this year, and it's because as soon as the season finished, I got no calls, nobody said they wanted to speak to me. So right. I didn't know that you were really away until just late doors. And I thought, hey. oh, maybe I should send him a text, see if he's all right. But then lo and behold, here you are. So happy days, eh?
There you are. Beautiful. Oh, don't worry, Nave. That's not. Don't get paranoid about that. There's none of us want to speak to any of us. That's true. To be quite honest, those average cameras, right? You think, and then you click it. I'll go fast. And, and by the way, it's 50 miles an hour, so it's not yeah. fast at all. There's cameras. It's certainly in Nottingham. Before I, I remember, I got done in Nottingham. I was coming back from like Anfield or, or the North late, and I was like two in the morning, and I got done doing 40 miles an hour in a 30, right? And it top that tipped me over the edge, right? <laughs> I don't mean literally. I mean, I mean I, I, for a fun, for a, a trap. What do you call it? A ban. Right, you got banned. Well, because I went over my points. Right. So I went over like 11 points. So I got banned. So I hired this lawyer to get me off, and I gave it the old. He gave it the old. Uh, my client. And I went to court. My client. Uh, if he gets banned from driving, he's going to get have to get on public transport and to get to these games. And everybody knows him, and he's, he's, the chances are that uh, he'll get beaten up <laughs> on the public transport because <laughs> people hate him. And the judge went, "I'll take that into account." He went, "Banned six months." <laughs> get on the bloody bus. Was he a Celtic fan? <laughs> it was the wife. Get on the bus. Ah, and do you know dear. what? Without the car. Oh my God. Yeah. Luckily, I had Nigel Jemson, the ex Nottingham Forest and uh, Sheffield Wednesday player, who lived close to me. So he drove you around? Pretty much. What a treat that is. I never told you, I told you this. <laughs> I never told me pulled into the golf club uh, and all the lads were there. I used to roll down the window and say, I've got my driver, Jemmo. Oh. And he always used to say, if you say that once more, I'm not picking you up. Right. So won't. So, um, you ever been six months without a car? No, we're well, not. Oh. No. Right. So, uh, should we talk about football? Should we talk? No, we don't have cameras here so, so much, do we? No, we don't. No, no. It's more the state police waiting. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, last point, Frank. Are you having dinner with Del Piero tonight? Did you say? Like uh, ESPN I, FC I, no, I, te I texted him, uh, yeah. and he didn't answer yet. So he's blocked you. Either, <laughs> either, yeah, maybe he blocked me. Maybe he wants to avoid me, like you did, uh, or maybe he's back to Italy for a holiday. So I will give him the benefits of the doubts, but uh, oh. not for long. He's in LA. He's going to a game tonight. Why yeah. would you? Um, I think that's this weekend. He's going. Oh, this weekend. Why yeah. would you? Uh, did How much do you think it would take to get me to go to a game? Um, How much money? I don't know, Craig. Guess, have a, give a figure and I don't, I'll tell you. I don't think well, there is. Give a figure and I'll tell you. There's not a figure, I know well, you. Give? There's not. And you, I no, could no. say a million dollars. No, no I'd go no. for a million dollars. <laughs> would you? Yeah, I'd just sleep during the game. <laughs> I mean, I'll give a realistic figure and I'll tell you if I'd go. Uh, okay, so I think he's going to, what's it, El Trafico? El Trafico? Yeah. Well, tra I can't go because of the traffic. <laughs> El Trafico, what a name. Go on, give me a figure. I'll tell you if I'd go. 20. 20,000? 20, 20 grand you'd go. Mm, yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah, I think that's the that's where yeah. we're at. Yeah. Okay, right. Ten, ten <laughs> no. <laughs> Away from big shots. Ten, Did no. Frank really say it's tougher to win the Euros than the World Cup, really? Then why was the World Cup victory his number one favourite moment? <laughs> uh, because it's worldwide. As simple as that, and it's not only the Europe, that's it, because he has a be better, um, um, how do you say, because the viewers are bigger, so then, because the, everything is why bigger. Is the Euros, why is the Euros tougher then? Because you don't have, and with all due respect, any exotic uh, national teams. That's what it is. When you play in Europe, you only have top teams. Uh, uh, and um, it's not well, like, like Scotland. When you, we're in the last year, Rose. Yeah, we, when you play in the, in the world, in, uh, we play against Saudi Arabia, and when we won the World Cup, you know, so we don't have you don't have that in Euro for the first yeah, game. It's going to be end, tough. At, at the end, you've still got to play Brazil or Argentina. You you still got to face, you know, yeah, the juggernauts of world football. So it's uh, it's uh, if you win, it's seven games, I think, in the World Cup. You can have like two or three games where you can even put the B team, let's say, where in the in Euro, you cannot. It's seven no, tough look games. Look at England. Look, England got to the final of the Euro. Who they beat? Germany? No, but uh, you, don't, you don't hear me. Before, in the group <laughs> stages, well, you can have the chance to rest your team because it's not <coughs> as tough as it is during the Euro, the old tournament long. It's more, it's nicer to win a World Cup. It's tougher to win a Euro. Thoughts, Nathan? I can't actually see where he's coming from, to be honest. It's a different sort of makeup to get to it. Because I think at the last World Cup, I think England were playing like, was it Honduras or something like that? Or Panama? You know, Panama. That's in the group stage. So in some ways, like, Panama deserved to be there. But the makeup of like the top sort of teams on the world stage versus the other ones who qualified from their section, it's not quite the same. So I understand what Frank's trying to say. 
and I'm going to agree with him because he's my senior pro, and I will follow oh him to the end. Oh, my goodness. Your anti conquer ways, Nedum. I love you, Nedum. I love you. Yeah, uh, of course, of course. <laughs> Ukraine, Denmark, Germany. Who's England, England beat to get to the Euros? Yeah, good luck. What do you mean? That's how they got to the final. Do they play the three games? I don't know. That's who he just told me. I'm just well, that's, right. that's wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying. Ukraine what? In the knockout rounds. Ukraine what? Denmark, Germany. Oh, no, thanks. Right, in which era of your respective... This is, this is an interesting question. In which era of your respective playing careers were the uniforms... Most comfortable. I've seen short shorts, collared shirts, baggy uniforms. They all looked awful. Retrospectively, are the current uniforms of clubs, countries, the most comfortable they've ever been? Does it matter? Oh. Wow. I don't know. I've never tried them on. When you played, though. <laughs> yeah, but it's asking me. It's asking, not asking me. Are the current uniforms of club countries the yes. most comfortable they've right. ever been? I've never. But how do I know? Okay. I've not had the freaking things on. Oh, I know what oh, the It's just because someone's asking a question. Get angry at them. Oh, I mean, how are you, uh, but how are you Nadem, answer that Nadem, you, you retired uh, yeah, the latest um, out of this group. Okay, so the, from when from when Cray and Frank were playing, I think it was a bit baggier. So some people would say that is comfortable. And then as time passed, like the materials changed, but it became a bit tighter because then, you know, everyone remembers, I think it was the Cameroon team with the Puma kit, which is basically spray on. But you need to be a certain type of athlete for that. So some teams went that way, but in the end they pulled back. And now I would say overall, it, it, it's pretty comfortable because they're trying to go for the whole technology route and all that stuff. So I'd say it's more comfortable now, but then also the people within it are yeah. sort of going a different way. See, I would have fitted in that spray tan thing. If you looked at me in that, in that neck, <laughs> yes, uh, that neck uh, <laughs> brace, traction thing, I fit the really tight thing as well. Because Shaka looked like he was wearing a poncho, didn't he, when he was playing? He, he said he said he always liked. Listen, like, he'd always go extra extra. Is Shaka's a goalie? He could have given him anything. <laughs> right. Well, they were, uh, they were. Uh, yeah, everything was a bit baggier, but it's comfortable. I, I don't know. Right. Like, comfortable? What's comfortable? I'm not playing today. So I'm not playing today, Gaffer. I'm not very comfortable. <laughs> That's very But like in the 70s, do you think it, like I remember seeing pictures of um, of Maras when he when he was playing in those Arsenal shorts, the tight were, ones. Yeah, there, was, a, yeah. there wasn't. Well, what much. I can tell you is the uh, obviously the pitches are were much different. Yes, right. that's a big difference. Not not. All right, not, okay, we're not talking about the pitches. Well, well you're asking me if if wearing clothing. Well, you just said no. That's fine. Uh, well, I'm going to answer that question. What do you think? The I pitches. Think, <laughs> I think at the time, That's your prominent the, question. The, the, era before, the era before us, I think it was dangerous because of the short shorts. That could yes. have been dangerous for me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, after, I think it was very comfortable at the time that I played because there was XXL, you know, kind of shirt. I tried, uh, you know, Rüdiger uh, in the semi-final of the uh, Wembley uh, game uh, offered me shirt after the game. I mean, it's oh, very tight. It's very technique. Okay, it's very technique. It's very nice, but it's very tight because they want to show their muscles. So it's not very comfortable in a, in a, in a way because they get the right. the S muscles. So you know, they they take S like that. You see everything. <laughs> but I think I think it's very. Our time was nice. XXL comfortable. You know, we can move. Yeah. The only thing is we have to put the sh the shirt inside the shorts. Otherwise, it was a yellow card. <laughs> really? 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 Yeah. I think as well with your shirts from back then, I think it was all comfortable until it rained, then you'd just be drowning in fabric. I think that's the difference now. Yeah. Whereas some of these more modern ones, like, if you get wet, it doesn't really make any difference. Mm. Is that really a bookable offence? What's that? I'm, I'm our referee? No, I'm, I'm your I shirt. When you played, no, I'm your shirt. <laughs> I can't I'm sure that's not true. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. Nadem. I'll tell you what, this is tight. <laughs> I'm sensing a theme. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. I need to, uh, there's at least 10 has to come off. Uh, Nadem, what was it like to share a locker room with Yaya Toure? Tell us more about his presence on and off the pitch as you're someone who has seen him firsthand. Well, I saw him first time for about six months. Let's not put too much on my career there. You know, I was very much out the door by the time he was rising to his peak. But he was, he's a really nice guy, and I did some work with him earlier this year as well. Ooh. He's really funny, light-hearted, enjoys just playing the game, and he's just a positive influence, and he's so casual, yet brilliant at the same time. He was one of probably one or two players who I played with where, like, if they played well, you felt confident you were going to win. 
because you, there was no matchup for him on the other side. So he was a really good guy and an absolutely incredible player. And he sort of took training to a different level because if he was on it, as I say, you could do as much as you could, but at the end of the day, he'd probably come up short. But then why, obviously as a brilliant player he was and what he did at City, also on that list is birthday cake gate. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about any of that stuff, to be honest. It's 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 all very, very strange. And even earlier in the year, he, when I spoke to him, he thought that he wasn't welcome back at City. But then I said, all the staff, they love you. The fans, they love you. You know, they right. want to see you back up here. So maybe there's a bit of a misunderstanding there. And obviously, like, maybe he doesn't really want to rectify it. But I hope that he does at some point because people are desperate to see him back in Manchester. Because right at the minute, I think he's probably coaching for Spurs which really threw me off because he'd be more than welcome to come back up north. Oh. Birthday cake, huh? Do you remember that? Slightly. There you go. Okay. He, uh, no, 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 why is people defined? By, by the way, I've, I've been sitting here when the boys have been talking, uh, worrying about what we're going to do for the next few weeks. Okay, right. Well, we're just going to answer some questions for now. Uh, will Gautier, Frank, have the guts to bench Neymar and Messi if they perform like how they did last season? Uh... Hopefully, yes. I mean, he's there for, for that. Uh, and um, I think he's been picked because he, 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 uh, he, he wants to show his character. And he has a character. Uh, of course, he never coached uh, at that level uh, with top, top players. But he showed that, um, that he has the, the guts to, uh, to, uh, to, to do some choices. And uh, I think he's been picked for that. Because that's the thing that they want to resolve in the dressing room, making sure that everybody is treated the same way and he can be, uh, um, you know, a, 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 a so-called lesser good player and, uh, and, and, and a big star that would, should be the same. So hopefully he's going to do the same if Neymar is not good or Messi is not good or Mbappe is not good, uh, they, he, he will bench them. Has he replied to your text, Frank? Yes, he did. And today, uh, yesterday I sent him a text again because it was confirmed. <laughs> and I said, I'm very pleased. So if you need me again, don't hesitate. And he say, well, happy to see you very soon. Yes. Need you for what? Yeah. Need you for what, Frank? Uh, it's, not, it's none of your business, you know. You want to understand. <laughs> I tell you what, though, it's not, not going to be easy for him, Frank, is it? I mean, I, I'm surprised managing the uh, French uh, rugby union team and PSG. Oh. That's going to be difficult, oh. isn't it? Why is he doing the rugby team as well? <laughs> Gaultier, there's a coach there, is he not? I don't know. Yeah. Oh. It's double bubble. Well, maybe maybe, maybe, it's, the, maybe it's different people. <laughs> right, final... Well, there's only one Gaultier in France, isn't there? Final question. Rank in terms of first touch, Frank. Zidane, Berbatov, Burkamp. Oh, I love Berbatov. Oh, such a fantastic player. Oh. Hmm. Well, no, it's not you. Who is it hates? Oh, no, it was Gab. Oh. He hates uh, I, I, I go, Bergkamp. <laughs> I go with Berbatov, Zidane and Beckham. Oh, wow. Beckham. Berbatov, Berkamp and Z, uh, Zidane, oh, Beckham. Not Beckham. I was Berkamp. Yeah, they've, all, yeah. they've all got great. So I would say um, Berkamp first. Oh, yeah? Remember the touches for... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I won't go into it then. I've <laughs> 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 <be> first. <laughs> You've remembered. Uh, Nina, what are we going to do in the next three weeks? Shut up. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, I think I'm going to have to go to my senior pro. I think Berbatov was special. And then uh, I think he said Bergkamp to Zidane, so I'll go with that. That's it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We will be back tomorrow. Unfortunately, Craig has a day off. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.